Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I'm going to show you how you could run machine code from assembly code. Let's say you've got some machine code, right? I have sh I'm showing you the machine code in hex. That's the reason why you're seeing zero X in the front, okay? So how can you analyze this machine code? You wanted to reverse engineer the machine code, understand what are the instructions hiding inside this machine code? How can you do that? One possibility you can uh, do is just call the machine code and run it and see. That may or may not be a good idea in, in some contexts. Um, so what I'm going to show to you th though is that how can you first of all reverse engineer what is there in the machine code with the help of GDB. So all I'm doing here is that I'm putting my um, start code here, right? Here is your main method more or less and jump to machine code and we will put a breakpoint at the machine code and look at what is the set of instructions hiding here. Okay, that's basically what I'm going to do now. So I will just compile this code first, right? So I compiled it. As a matter of fact, you can also use object dump now to look at the code. Okay. Uh, object dump with minus D will show you only one line because that's the only one line I had in my assembly code. Remember the start had only one jump statement. That's what you're seeing here. Okay, what I, what I can do is I can just go and replace small d by capital D. It will show me the assembly code also for the data region. Okay, all right, let's do that. Now you would see many more things. Here is your machine code that I mentioned on my assembly language, right? And 31, C0, B0, all the way until 80 is something that you already saw in my assembly code, right? This is all you saw in my assembly code. But we can now look at, for example, object dump, and it's going to tell us at a high level, meaning at assembly level, we can see the, the meaning, okay? It's difficult to understand 31, C0, B0, Z1, and so on over here. Only a, maybe a small set of people would understand this. Uh, but uh, this is relatively um, a higher level of abstraction comparing to machine code, of course. This is assembly, right? This is relatively easier to understand comparing to machine code. This is machine code. This is what machine understands, okay? Um, so all I did essentially is took all the bytes, right? 31, Z0, B0, whatever, and put it into my assembly code and disassemble it with the help of object nup, okay? That's how you could reverse engineer machine code into assembly code. Okay. And let me now show you how to run this and then we can analyze it more. If you look at this, this is the machine code. I will be running the machine code now with the help of GDB, for example. First, let me finish the linking. I didn't link the object file. And let's GDB minus Q run machine code. Okay, we will have only one line as I mentioned earlier as part of the start statement. But we put a breakpoint at this address and run it. Now the breakpoint is hit. Let's say we wanted to see what is there in that particular breakpoint. We can disassemble the entire code now. Yeah, you can see all of the code behind the machine code that we wrote in our assembly. So this is what's happening, okay, we can easily check this. This is XR of EX, EX, that means EX is zero here, right? We are moving one to the lower part of, lower part of uh, AL. So essentially EX becomes one, right? And then we are setting EBX to be zero because XR of EBX with EBX is zero. Okay, and then we are doing an interrupt, okay, remember? If EX has the value one and EBX has the value zero, interrupt means we are making a system call, which is nothing but exit of zero. Okay, so we are basically calling exit function from our machine code inside our assembly code. Okay, that's what we just did. All right. So I can now put a breakpoint. Well, this is already waiting here, so we can move. Step instruction, step instruction, step instruction. And then step instruction, we are done. We exit because there is an interrupt here and the exit status can be checked easily, exit zero. 
Okay, we can check it from outside also. Run machine code. I can check the status, it's zero. Okay, so this is as simple as it. Okay, all you're doing is just, of course, get the machine code, whatever machine code you would like to analyze, right? Put it inside a, a byte list. This is the syntax. But this is just a variable name or a label. Here is a byte and you keep listing all the bytes, okay? And then you say jump to that particular label. And when you put a label, the control will jump there. Instead of uh, code, we have data, but data will be treated as code. That's how we are able to transfer the control and run the code. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much.